Today, we see how we can take advantage of both common Lisp and Python. A programmer may choose Lisp for interactive programming, macros, and so on. But there are fast evolving fields in which everything is implemented in Python, and the real world Lisp application may need to interface with them. In theory, we could rewrite everything in common Lisp with even good performance, but this is not a practical solution. Our goal is to make Common Lisp work with modern technologies to get both the advantages of interactive programming and what the current technological advantages can offer. This is where we can take advantage of a Py for CL. The idea is quite simple. We have a code written in Common Lisp, basically our own, and some code written in Python, which is, for example, a useful library we want to use. Therefore, if we want to have them both running, for sure, we have to run both the Lisp runtime and the Python runtime. At this point, we just have to make them talk. And, and basically, any solution of inter-process communication is fine, which would be sockets, pipe, message queues, and so on. Pipe for CL has chosen stream, which is basically printf and read. This is also the advantage of being multi-platform. So the idea is that we start our Lisp program, which creates a Python child process, which in turn runs a simple server that reads from standard input. Every time we need it to execute a command, we just send it. As soon as Python receives a command, it tries to run it, and it returns the result to common Lisp using printf. In this design, the main issue is the serialization. What can we send back and forth? Because in general, it's difficult to serialize any object. Py4CL implemented the code to serialize all basic types like bool, int, string, dictionaries, and so on. NumPy array, which is the standard way to do scientific computing in Python, which becomes Lisp array and fraction, which becomes radio types in Lisp. We can see how this is implemented inside Py4CL, which is quite interesting, because we can see that it generates directly Lisp code. For example, a dictionary is created using a makers table, and then for each element inside the dictionary, it uses getHash. Then, recursively, it converts every object of Python inside an object of common Lisp. A little bit below, we can see also the code to create a Lisp array, which uses a string literal, the number of dimensions with an A, and then, between parentheses, all the elements. Obviously, we have to be careful about what we send to Python it has to be trusted. On the Python side, there is a call to eval or exec, which means that if the user can inject some code, it can easily make a remote code execution attack. Nevertheless, Py4CL offers a domain-specific language which wraps all the messages sent to Python. We will see how it works shortly in an example. To get a better idea of what happens on the Python side, we can see that there is a rectful string, which first reads the number of characters, and then it actually reads the content using sys.standardin. The result of rectful is sent directly to eval. This end value is analogous, in particular, it takes the value, it uses Lispify, which is a function that uses the conversion we have seen before, and then first it sends the length of the string and then the actual value. To finish, it flashes to be sure that everything is sent. We have seen send value and receive value, but the main dispatch loop, which is the function that actually implements the server, works the same way. First of all, it reads a single character, which is the type of command we want to send, and then it dispatches based on the command what to do. For example, if the command is E, 
e directly read the string and evaluate and so on for all the others. So now we have got an idea on why Pi4CL is useful and also on how it works behind the scene. The next step is to actually try it. Now we try to run the example on the README. Usually Python libraries are not installed globally. So we will run everything in a virtual environment. We will use poetry, which is quite a general setup. An alternative to poetry could be Conda or directly virtual env. Now I stop Emacs because I will have to restart it in the Python environment. First of all, I initiate the Python environment. I accepted all the default values and we can see that it creates a pyproject.toml. Now I install all the libraries required by the script, which are NumPy, SciPy, and Matplotlib. We can see that there is an error with the version of packages. In particular, I have to change the available Python versions. Replace them with this. So I go to the Python line and update it. Now let's try to run Poetry Add again. It worked. Now I install SciPy. And finally, matplotlib. Everything is installed, I can start a shell in a new environment. And from this, start emacs and create a file main.lisp. I also detach it from the shell. Let's copy and paste the example. I want also to verify that it starts a new Python interpreter. From the command line, I run the command watch pgrep af python. It goes on running pgrep python. At the beginning, there are four projects which contain the word python, which are not related to pi4cl. As soon as we run pi4cl, we should see a new interpreter starting. Let's connect the common lisp. And now we can start to execute the commands. We load pi4cl. And then we run the first pi4cl command, which imports the numpy library. Now, if we return to the command line, we can see that it started the pi4cl server. Let's go on with the other commands. This is the first command that actually runs a Python function. We can see that we imported integrate above and now we are running it. What it does, it solves a differential equation in which this vector represents the system of two equations with this initial state. We are not really interested in the details about this function. What's important is that now data is a Lisp object which contains data created from Python. If we run data, we can see that we can inspect it. So this piece of data was transferred from Python to common Lisp. Then we import another Python module. And finally, we try to plot it. So we have to transfer back the data from common list to Python. We change the X label of the plot. And finally, we ask Python to write the file on disk in result.pdf. If we go from the common line, we can see that we can open it. And this is the result. We can also show it using plt.show. I think that this is a really nice library and it can be useful. I wouldn't use it in a list program that will become an executable to be distributed. But server side, we have complete control over the environment in which the list runtime is executed.
For today this is all, let me know in the comments if you like the video, leave a like and subscribe.